Hello, everybody. Just uh, give a moment here for this to boot up. This is the uh, second round today. Uh, the last round, my internet died. I still don't understand what happened. I had to reboot my server and, uh, well, not my server, but my router. And um, after a while, eventually started working. So I'm assuming we were under some kind of attack, but uh, here we are again. Round two, which means we gotta go back from the very beginning because I can't really splice and dice this. And the other the other one will be deleted. So we'll, for future reference, we need to go back from the very beginning. But uh, I suppose it, the first time was practice. I suppose <laughs> all the listeners are gonna get a little review again. So um, by the way, give me a moment here uh, before we start rolling, cause I gotta, do everything all over again. So let me notify the audience members on Facebook uh, about the live stream and uh, get everybody so we can get some people back on board again. And uh, we can get rolling here. And if you have some questions for Veronica while we go through all this, I would love to hear them when, um, when we come up for some Q&A. All right, so welcome Patty. Patty, uh, Linda, Lane, Sebastian, thank you for, for um, joining us again. Um, all right, so uh, I'm James Rink, and uh, welcome to Super Soldier Talk. To, tonight we have Veronica with us, and Veronica is going to be sharing some of her experiences as a She-Hulk, as well as some of her remote viewing um, sessions that we've done together. She... Uh, has been on my show. This is the fourth interview <laughs> this time around. And uh, we've gone mostly in the other interviews we did was with um, um, the, the Hulk program. So we're going to go in a little bit of that because I got some pictures of the Hulk that we wanted to show um, that we um, had drawn up. But uh, in this particular show, we're going to go into, um, well, let me go ahead and read, actually, let me back up here and read this bio. So Veronica is going to be talking about the project, the Hulk program, which started out as Project Blue Ranger. He was designed as a cowboy type super soldier, but there was an explosion. Mutations occurred and the Incredible Hulk was a result. Uh, the project was then replicated on other super soldiers, including uh, my clone, Rob Richter, and Veronica's clone, uh, Sheila the She-Hulk. Veronica Bartolini was in the SSP, as well as Monarch, Montauk, Mannequin, Kruger, Nakwafen, Crystal, Project Crystal Gates, which is with the Dauphin Super Soldiers, as well as Stargate SG-1. She was also part of Umbrella Corporation's Hulk program, which started out as Black Shield, started out Black Shield, Blue, oh, so Black Shield was the name of the Planetary Corporation, and then that's what was making the leaks that added the, the Project Blue Ranger. Her spiritual name is Kumru, and she has Draco DNA. While on the SSP, Veronica went by the name of Soel and served on missions to rescue children. Her civilian life includes titles of police officer, U.S. Army vet, realtor, behavioral health tech, and recovery coach from trauma. She had a near-death experience in 2010, and she was dead for three days. In today's video, we will be discussing a channel com conversation with Nikola Tesla, an update on Sheila, the She-Hulk, and the Blue Ranger. So we're going to show some of the drawings. And then we're going to talk to... Uh, people known as the LaCoya and uh, they are not very group, not good, um, good group of people, but uh, they're like shapeshifters. And um, so anyway, um, we'll get into that when the time comes, Veronica, let's see, like, go ahead and unmute yourself. And uh, so let me, can you go ahead and unmute yourself? Hello. Hello. Thank you, James, <laughs> again. <laughs> Yeah, for, for being here. Yeah, with me. And thank you, audience. Mm. Round two. Here we go. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Um, and by the way, audience members, I'm sorry the internet dropped. Uh, it, I have no idea what happened, but uh, I'm assuming it was not. I don't know. I, I don't want to go into paranoia here. So we're not going to, I don't want to assume anything, but what we will do is we did, we did do a little clearing and ask for some protection and we got, got guides and guardian angels on board. So we're going to move forward with this uh, amazing content. And um, I also want to mention audience members tomorrow. I'm doing another live stream with Johan Fritz 
and uh, be sure to check that out. Of course, in the future, if you watch this, it won't be tomorrow, it would be in the past, but uh, that interview will be um, on there with the, because we're going to do a history of the secret space program. I've got a 150 slide PowerPoint presentation, which I want, I'm going to show. So that is at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, that will be, I'm pretty sure we're going to be lot ready to go live right on the, on the dot meal within maybe 10 minutes speaking, but yeah. Okay, so uh, Veronica, um, let me actually, why don't you tell people, give us a little background on how you came about channeling Nikola Tesla? Well, for many years, I was interested in Nikola and the technologies that he had, that he had made. And I would always wonder why, why don't they really talk about him? You know, why are they always talking about Einstein and stuff like that? And and um, when I had my awakening, I had like, I discovered that I had the ability to um, <laughs> mess with electronics and turn off electronics without meaning to. And so I started questioning myself, could I be related to him or what is it that, why am I so fascinated with him? And so, Come to find out uh, one of my great grandfathers worked with him. And so that's what we did in the past regression. It's exciting. I it got to like, talk to him. <laughs> your, your grandfather was a mathematician. Yeah. And he actually worked in Nikola Tesla. Yes. Hmm. On my dad's side. So I thought that interesting. was interesting. Yeah. And what about you? Do you, do you, are you like a math genius or? I sucked at math, but um, it's weird. Like in, in college at the university, I was getting a 3.0 uh, my junior year. I took trigonometry, physics, everything, but it's just weird. Like I may, I may not be a genius at it, but as far as quantum physics and things like that and in and in my dreams and envisions and even like during the day when I'm driving or when I'm out on my bike ride I see like these numbers in the sky and I write down the equations sometimes and remember we had that um that we spoke to Adrian and I was able to hack into a master computer as far as the chip that we have back here it's just weird how I'm like always seeing equations and I may not understand it fully like they want us to understand it here in the programming of freaking Stanford or education, uh, the education programming, but somehow I figure things out. It's kind of weird, right? Yeah. And you know, a lot of mathematicians, they're, um, they're channeling the information. They're almost like, uh, um, you, you, almost, I mean, you may think you're doing these calculations in your own mind, but it's almost like, uh, a form of an astral computer and the information's being remotely viewed from a distance or of course, a lot of these numbers are um, imaginary, but um, well, I mean, imaginary as in uh, non-tangible, but anyway, okay, let's, I don't want to talk. Uh, you Didn't you have a, uh, wasn't there a story you had about their spiders before? I, I, I think we, we skipped over that. You oh, want to yeah. hear that story again, just real, real quick. Yeah. Yeah, so I was in like the medical field in this um, time. And all of a sudden, I see like this spider being on my hand. And it was like really big. It was like holding on to me, like pricking my skin. And it was pretty big. Like it was black. And it was like telling me that it was sentient. While it was telling me that it didn't want to hurt people anymore. That it was tired of being used to. It was pretty much a detonator and a mind uh, reader, like a drone. But I have the ability to speak to things, my vehicle, you know, my phone, things, inanimate objects, like they say. And in this, uh, in this reality, I was like, okay, well, I don't want you to hurt anybody either. But I knew that I had to set it down. So I put it, I set it down at a, a, a fence area. And there was a, there was a, a person there like he looked military like he was wearing a tan suit and then there was a lady there too and I worked with him too making these technologies such as a spider which I don't even know what the name is 
technical name, but um, so he was trying to climb the fence, you know, because this bomb was going to this, sorry, this uh, spider was going to go off and into an explosion. So I just find it interesting how it didn't want to, it said it didn't want to hurt anybody anymore. And there, we know that there are some good spiders and there are some bad, just like there are malevolent ETs and what is it? Benevolent and malevolent. malevolent. Yeah. So I just thought it was interesting how it spoke to me. So we, you think this was perhaps maybe a diamond spider and uh, somebody mentioned in the chat that that's in Saturn on a moon in Saturn. Um, it it yeah. did it actually look like a diamond spider. Yes. It was very big though. Very big. And we're also going to talk about Saturn, right? The mansion, or did we talk about that already? In uh, my, I think, I believe we talked about that already, according to my oh, notes okay. anyway. All right. It's interesting that they say Saturn though. <laughs> yeah. So Saturn, uh, apparently there are a lot of uh, negative ET bases there. Um, but uh, so in, in the last video that we did, we talked about how one of them was taken over, at least on one of the yes. moons, and was being used as recuperation center. Um orphanage uh for okay uh someone uh, um yeah so the, i guess one only thing i want to mention is so this was um i guess you were remote viewing this spider and it's being used as a weapon and um it already died and it's it came back to talk to you after it did its no, mission no it was before it did its mission and this was in one of my dreams that i had and it was like i felt so sorry for it like but I just knew that it told me to put it down and I had to put it down, you know, on the fence. So mm -hmm. they're creating these uh, technologies, the drones, you know, what, what they call the drone with the shoe. Uh, they're in, I've seen them, I've taken pictures and I've seen like where there's the drones and people won't see them with their naked eye. You know, they're, we're being monitored. We're always being listened to in public. And so even at home, like I took off the, um, the fire um, alarms because that's another, um, uh, how they monitor you, pretty much their cameras. Um, the LED la lamps outside, they just placed them here one year ago and I hated it because it was right by my, by my uh, bedroom window. And so those are, those are already, they have cameras in there. So there's ways that they monitor us and things like that. But the thing of it is, is, we have to just stop being afraid because the more we're, well, the more people give in fear, that's how they're being controlled. So just know your power, know your sovereign, you know? All right. So let's go ahead and get dive into the Nikola Tesla material here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and uh, we're going to go back through this again. Some people, this may actually be review, uh, but we'll get through it. I think we only got through like half a page of this, but uh, for, for those of you, we get to you definitely get the material down. So, so we start <laughs> off, and um, I believe it's the North New Yorker Hotel. If I'm not mistaken, I think that's where Nikola T Tesla was staying at the end of his life. And uh, so there was a um, an elevator that go went down into the basement. That uh, it was like a, a private elevator that he had access to, or or the people working with him. And um, so it's circa 1945, and uh, we go back uh, here. Um, this private elevator to the office area. With, there are two bookshelves filled with rare books, and the, so so this is inside the office, correct? Where these mm -hmm. books are? Okay. Yes. On um, the floor of this office, it has black and white tiles, checkerboard. The room walls have a grayish blue tone. There are two chalkboards on the walls, and they are full of equations and some words. And uh, someone has actually written the equations on the walls now too. They're written in, we see white, black, red, and green chalk. And the, uh, yeah, so the equations look like, uh, so it's written by someone who's been there for a very long time. So we see uh, the, around this, I guess, in the wall itself <laughs> is built in what seemed to be like a Faraday type cage around the whole complex. It's meant to keep EMF or malevolent AI signals away. It looks like a spider web like electrical wires covered with plaster all over the walls. There's a desk and square table in the room which Tesla is sitting in. The smaller square table has a 40 inch globe device 
which is sitting on a silver bowl that you could put water into it. There, was, there are silver pipes that go around the wall, which pour water into the bowl. The bowl is dry right now. This device has something to do with free molecular structure, which can make free energy. We still connected. This is where we lost. I lost you last time. <laughs> this is where we are. Yes. Are we good? <laughs> Transition good. Clear, free, clear, clear. Okay. <laughs> um, you want to comment about this? Do you have any information on this bowl and this globe thing? He was, uh, it was a project that he was working on and it was just, it was, it's like those globes that where you put your hands on and, and you can, you know, your electromagnetism is like in sync with it. You know, like when you're a kid and you go to Spencer's and you see that globe, it was kind of like that. It was pretty big, pretty awesome. It hmm. was like sentient. Um, it was pretty neat. You can do the read mode. Okay. All right. Uh, Nikola Tesla is sitting at his desk. There are papers strewn about its surface. Both hands are covering his face as it appears. He is meditating. Um, he's wearing a cream beige colored suit and is, and, and is in distress over a meeting with some people he just had. He is worried he gave these men too much information about trip seat technology. He just found out the trip seat will be used for experimental purposes in the SSP and not for positivity. The men want him to tweak the chair so they can use it for experimentation and so that the elites can see the future. So the only thing I could really comment about the uh, trip chair is that it was based on the con a conscious chair recovered from the crash at what I thought was Roswell. That was in 47. So <clears throat> maybe if they had another conscious chair, it would have been from some other ET trade or something maybe you mm -hmm. want to comment about that do you have any information on when they got their first trip seat no not yet i would have to mm. look into that okay and uh do you know what uh they were planning to using this trip seat i mean did, did it actually have the ability to change memories or was it like a healing med bed type device or do you know it was supposed to be for healing but obviously they used it for mind wipe hmm okay yeah, I think the uh, the N the NAZIs they didn't get a hold of mind wipe technology till 1954. So um, it could be a planetary corporation, but uh, mm -hmm. you know we're just guessing here. Okay. I don't like to guess. I just I just what what I told you that's what you wrote down, and okay. I'm not gonna guess. <laughs> They have threatened to kill his family if he doesn't cooperate. He is not worried about his life so much because he knows he will live forever. He has been given a deal and allowed some time to think about it. Tesla says we can all live forever by not eating junk food and GMO products. We've been programmed to eat what you see with your eyes. You are constantly thinking about food. You do not give your body the nutrition or enough time to digest its food before you think about your next meal. Tesla is working on a device to slow aging. He says it involves spring water that is diluted. Uh, so you see him with a bunch of mathematical equations and his, okay, um, to show what the water dilution was diluted into. There is a binding of hydrogen and oxygen. We think it might be similar to Jeff Harvey's easy water, but um, mm -hmm. I don't know. Have Jeff, apparently it didn't, didn't cure him, but you know, I don't know what, I'm not necessarily mm -hmm. going to comment too much about Jeff. I, if anybody know who Jeff Harvey is, uh, he, uh, he used to have a website called Harvey tech or Harvey net, Harvey tech. Oh, anyway, dot net. And, uh, yeah, he was working on this, this, uh, this device. It was like $400,000. He was trying to get backers and then suddenly he died, but he had a lot of health issues. So maybe it was just a little bit too little too late. I don't know. Anyway. So there are more equations involved in this and needs to be refined even further. Veronica now goes into another room that has a 20 foot tall high bell shaped dome that can be used to make electricity. It's a portal jump room and there are spider like thin wires hanging from the center of the dome that are silver, metallic and shiny. These wires are hanging inside the dome like a spider web like thing. When the dome is in use, you should be naked and it blows cool steam to the touch onto you and it helps rejuvenate you. This liquid can help replenish all your nutrients, vitamins, amino acids, and minerals that you should be getting from your food. It also gets rid of nanites, toxins, pollution, and has a re-aging effect, causing the skin to become more elastic and thicker again. 
This is a special technology he's been working on so that people should not have to eat so much. Tessa believes food should be for entertainment purposes only. This device is for healing, stopping aging, and reducing the food, the need of food intake, but it's also considered monarch technology. They don't want that the public to they don't want the public to know. Um, can you comment if Tesla was, I mean, he was probably using this device, right? It, yes. was, it was a working prototype. Yes. So that would mean, because near, near the end of his life, I mean, he looks pretty, I'm not saying he looks old. I mean, I don't want to, I mean, he looks like he's been aging. So um, maybe the last pictures. <laughs> okay, well, well, we'll say that for a bit, but do you want to comment about the modern technology? <clears throat> the thing of it is, is he was working on on the technology to make sure that, um, like, our skin would be rejuvenated, like, you know, that we wouldn't have any toxins, the, the nanonites, the whatever from the water, the fluoride, and it was supposed to keep us young, rejuvenated, without needing, like, too much, uh, pretty much food. You know, um, because there are, I mean, you've heard of breatharians, you've heard of people that, you know, just barely eat, that they do a lot of like intermittent fasting or whatever. And what they've done now is they've pretty much wanted to poison our food, you know, because they just want to experiment with us, you know, um, with the AI and the nanites that, that get into our skin, you know, with the V2K, the mind control and all that. So this was supposed to be used to help humanity and well got into the wrong hands mm -hmm. now it is used still like by um when when we're in space or whatever you can you come back and then they spray you with this technology that way you can get rid of whatever you acquired over there um to not bring whatever we have back in here back to earth to mother earth so that technology is still being used. I don't know if you remember when, um, and also, well, to lose the weight. I don't know if you remember, um, what's his name? Crap, I forgot his name. But he was like really, really overweight. And he was like a partner with, with CG. I don't want to mention his name. But he came back and um, he went into these chambers. And that's what they did. They pretty much sprayed him off. And with the, with the med bed and technologies that we have, you know, he was like weighing nothing, you know, um, his, his body, his face totally changed. I got to remember his name, but anyway, I think you know who I'm talking about, right? <laughs> I don't want to throw, throw names out yeah, there. I don't want I, to, either. I don't pay attention to CG camp. Uh, <laughs> but, um, anyway, yeah, so, either. but that well, was, that's what was happening when I had the awakening and I was like, Whoa, so when I remote viewed this uh, Tesla technology, I'm like, yep, that's what they used on him. <laughs> so. All right, so let's go back to this. Uh, where are we at here? All right, so we're on the bell shape. Okay, um, yeah, so you don't need to eat food in this device. You live forever. Okay, perfect health. Okay, so here's the dilemma. If he finishes the, vi the device, he will be killed. But if he does not finish it, he will lose his family and his legacy will be erased from the earth. So we um, ask him, you know, to consider focusing his research on time travel, such as the Diglaka, which he's familiar with, and ask people in the future to pull him and his family out of danger if he needs to be. We're, we're just trying to make suggestions. Him, but. So he says, he said in the year 2036, people will be willing to intervene and recover his family and then he can finish his device. We let him know we're from the present era, 2020, and he seems surprised, impressed, and touches his mustache and unshaven face. He asks if we did it. And this is a quote in his words. These things have been implemented in 2020. The technologies, the AI abilities, cardiovascular structure has already been mastered in other timelines. I never intended Wi-Fi to be charged for, never intend people to pay for electricity, for people to go with lack. I need to do something about the future right now so that history is not repeated again. For example, I want people to have free access to portals. Now the system has to have some kind of trade. 
right now is based on money and greed, as well as human trafficking involved. The so-called Galactic Federation has not kept all their agreements that we spoke about in particular with the Wi-Fi portal psychotronic energy. They have warped our agreement, and for this hum humanity has surfaced humanity has sur um, this, this humanity has surfaced greatly. I'm not sure if that's the right word, but greatly at the suffered <laughs> says yeah, humanity suffered. has suffered greatly at the hands of so-called elite, the so-called malevolent draconi. In 2020, human populations should be doing space tra time travel with stealth triangular technology. The high rise and low rise code for specific technologies in use now. The quickening of the portal transport, the facilitation of jump rooms all over the earth. Because they have not shown the technology to the public, they have stepped backwards their disclosure process. They traded us. They warped the time travel facilities for other covert operation and black projects. They traded innocent lives for gold, monoatomic gold, and other exotic minerals not found on planet earth such as in the asteroids. They also wanted delicacies. Yeah, some, I'm not going to read that out loud because I don't want this channel to get banned. But, mm -hmm. And he right. ended, up, uh, ended up hurting humanity in this timeline. That is why there's war in 2020. There's war against the mind of humanity. And I am saddened because what I created was not intended to harm anyone. I never intended to harm anyone. This was supposed to be beautiful. I'm saddened. So you must be rethinking, why are you all here? What will you do for the children as a society as a whole? So at this point, he is really sad and does not want to talk anymore. Uh, you want to comment, Veronica, about any of this? Some of the code coded messages here. So how about uh, the Galactic Federation? <laughs> and their agreements yeah. in Ashtar Command. Because uh, a lot of people are channeling Ashtar and... <clears throat> They're, yeah, they're, they're they're malevolent beings. You guys don't listen to Ashtar, don't listen to the Galactic Federation because they've been compromised. And uh, pretty much that what I saw for the future is where the fake alien invasion is involved, where like they're gonna have these ships that come on, and then they're gonna say, "Well, come on, come with me. You know, I can heal you. I have the med bed. I have the technology." So they're pretty much gonna be using using people. For this they're going to be promised with the thing that's coming up with the transhumanism that i saw and in my dreams and in my visions i see that they will promise people hey you know come up to the cloud uh you know let, let let's uh i'll you know let me use your your abilities or whatever your family will be protected for you know don't worry they'll have all the money or whatever and it's all lies it's all lies to try and get the the dna of the of the older humans and even younger humans or the adrenochrome and all that stuff that we shouldn't, I don't know, I guess we shouldn't talk about that right now, but hmm. yeah. So <clears throat> uh, be careful. The, the Ashtar command is not a good being and uh, it is, it does not have its high purpose for any of us. And that's all I'm going to say. So I think uh, to, add, to add to this conversation, what Tesla was upset about, and I think we'll, we'll, we'll probably be going into this later. It's in the notes, but um, the the Galactic Federation has these ships, tens of thousands, maybe more, stationed orbit around our system. So they keep them all cloaked. And the planetary corporations have extremely advanced technology, and they have bases underground, and they're using their technology to manipulate humanity. So we're already our free will has already been violated by other races and the group of positive ETs have the ability to help awaken humanity to let, them know, let us know that there are other positive groups that care and they're out there and that can counteract this, but they don't want to show their ships because they just don't, in my opinion, they don't want to get involved. Some of them are very arrogant. Um, even though they may be positive, you could consider them positive, but if you have a fully activated 12 strand DNA, and you live 150,000 years and you have everything already taken care of you, why would you even care about the human population on the surface? So there is a, there's a level in plus you're super psychic and you just, it doesn't matter. They just, we're just nothing to them. Now I'm not saying all ETs treat us like that, but um, that's one of the problems we're dealing with here. So uh, the other thing, somebody actually mentioned a name, Emery Smith. Is that the person you were talking about earlier? Yeah. 
Because I, I didn't know I was going to say Emory Smith while you were talking, but I didn't know he had he had overweight issues. But that's curious. Yeah. Uh, that, okay. Um, all right. Well, so there is some confirmation. So let's go back to the share screen here. Uh, okay. So he's he's sad. He does not want to talk. Oh, I don't know. If there's anything else in here we need to go. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, we'll we'll leave it at that. Let you all figure it out. Okay. So we inquire if he has plans to fake his death and travel to Venezuela. To Venezuela. set up a break. Did I not say it right? <laughs> I, I didn't get it right. Venezuela. Yeah, Venezuela. <laughs> Venezuela. Yeah. Venezuela. <laughs> I'm still not doing okay. it right. <laughs> okay, dude. So the rumor is him. Did I, not, I don't think I wrote this in my note. Oh, yeah. They're Mar- Marconi, him, um, Tesla, and I think there was someone else. Um, mm-hmm. They go to uh, this. The, this there's like a, a, a mesa somewhere deep in the rainforest there and the jungles where um, they wanted to set up a breakaway civilization. And uh, this was right around this, this whole time. And so um, if anybody has any information on that, uh, I'd be curious to learn more, but I was asking him if he could confirm if he actually faked his death and went down there. And he said, it might be a possibility. He is smirking. <laughs> So that's he he can't confirm or deny, just uh, smirk, right? He didn't want to, right? Okay. So I'm not saying he's still down there right now because if he if he is alive, he's probably moved on to the spaceships or off world or who who knows where he's at. But uh, I like to think he's still alive and faked his death. Mm-hmm. He did confirm he worked with the positive not NAZIs. Uh, Tesla would not consider himself an AZI sympathizer, sympathizer, sympath. Oh my gosh, forget it. You know what I'm saying? But he was friends with aspects of the good in in AZIs, and that's when threats came in from the negative side in in AZIs. So, uh, yeah, so I guess there were some factions that were, um, that that didn't necessarily embrace eugenics and uh, you know him Heinrich Himmler's solu- final solution, but they wanted to elevate humanity to be become the the Zarathustra the the um, 